Hello everyone and thank you for joining me in this new episode of Star Trek The Original Series. So today's turn is for Season 2, Episode 18, The Immunity Syndrome. As always, I see no spoilers, no information about the episode until after I watched it. Remember also that you can follow my social networks. You can also like, share and subscribe to my channel. It's just a tiny click you have to do. And if you want to watch every single reaction from Star Trek, you can become a patron or a YouTube member. I will leave a link in the description box below. For today's episode, I got a Lady Grey tea and I got another Gansito because this is the way that I lose weight. <laughs> Today's company is Robin, who is right behind me. She's finally taking care of me. She's adorable. Remember to start mentioning your favorite episodes from season number three. Remember that all your favorites will become reaction videos here on YouTube. And all the other ones that do not get enough votes will become reaction videos at my Patreon or on YouTube memberships. And you will get the review videos on YouTube. Today I didn't bring a themed t-shirt, I just got my Super Whitney Houston t-shirt. So let's get this done. Formed excellent but is exhausting. And I too am looking forward to a nice period of rest on some lovely planet. Yeah, like shore leave, remember? Intrepid is manned by Vulcans, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Enterprise oh. Calling Star what? 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 The Intrepid it just died. Can he be in communication with Vulcans? A hundred Vulcans aboard. Oh. Come on, Spock. Just go down to sick bay. Oh. Yes. Oh, I love that McCoy immediately tr uh, thought about treating him. Like, the shock that he must be feeling right now must be super hard. I love that about McCoy. We'll divert immediately to Sector 39J. Enterprise just completed an exhausting mission. We're on our way in for R&R. &R. There must be another starship in that sector. Negative. This is a rescue priority. Oh. Order acknowledged, Kirk out. Oh, that's horrible. I have just completed a full long-range scan of Gamma 7A system. It is dead. Dead? What do you mean? Like, every single... like a... Thanos snap? It's dead. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I have to say, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of interesting. This kind of uh, telepathy that Spock has, uh, that he could sense that everyone in the ship died. But what it's also intriguing is that also everyone in the planet appears to be dead. It says it's just dead. So I'm thinking every single inhabitant is dead. Every tree, every squirrel, if there are any, whatever. Well, all of my instruments seem to agree with you. I can trust these crazy Vulcan readings. I sensed it die. But I thought you had to be in physical contact with the subject before. Doctor, a half Vulcan could hear the death scream of 400 Vulcan minds. So he does have this connection? That not a person, not even the computers on board the Intrepid, knew what was killing them. Or would have understood it had they known. 400 Vulcan. It's too strong, the signal? You find it easier to understand the death of one than the death of a million speak about the objective hardness of the Vulcan heart. Yet how little room there seems to be in yours. Ah, uh, stop it. Stop. Exactly. What are we looking for, Mr. Spock? I would assume that. The spot there? The black potato? But what is it? Like it absorbs light? What is it? What is Yeah. That? Thank you. You'd be able to see stars through a dust cloud. Okay. Looks like a hole in space. Yeah. Whatever this dark zone is, it lies directly in line with the course I calculate for the Intrepid and the Gamma 7A system. Oh, so it swallowed it all. So it's like a black hole. It just swallowed it all. Launch probe. Probe launched, sir. Okay. There's no signal from it. Okay. I'm not joking. Insufficient data. So there's no data. There's nothing. Oh! Lieutenant? Oh, what now? I'm getting reports from every deck. Half the people on the ship just fainted. Oh. They all seem to be nervous, weak, and irritable. They say it happened suddenly like a balloon popping. Can you handle it, uh, How quickly they got to the office, to the, to the medical office. If you can't tell me what it is, let's use 
reverse logic. Perhaps it'll help if you tell me what it isn't. It is not liquid, gaseous, or solid, despite the <laughs> fact we cannot... So far, that's not much help. It is not... It would seem to be some form of energy. Okay. That this is what killed that solar system. Most likely. So, I would just stay away from it, just as a precaution, instead of trying to go and investigate? She's not feeling well. We're going to attempt to probe the area of darkness to gain further information. You're gonna kill them! Oh, he got affected too. That thing is huge! They shouldn't be getting any closer to it, in my opinion. Like, get in? Everyone is gonna... Bloody die! Captain! Ah, oh, thank goodness it was getting annoying. Are gone. Or maybe it's just your camera <laughs> that stopped working. Then kindly tell me what happened to the stars. <laughs> They're gone! What's that? Stimulant. With the same Combat. needle! Two thirds of the first Why? Wow. Do you have any answer? <laughs> Oh my goodness! This ship is in trouble. Oh yeah. That sound was the turbulence caused by the penetration of a boundary layer, Captain. What boundary layer? Okay. Unknown. That boundary thing has boundary layer between layers? Possible. Between where we were and where we are. Oh! Are you trying to be funny, Mr. Spock? They just... It would never occur to me, Captain. Did they just cross the threshold? But we seem to have entered a zone of energy. Okay. We... Recommendations. I have one. Getting out of here? I recommend survival. Oh my goodness! Let's get out of here. Oh. Ah. Oh. Let's get out of here. Better than... I mean... <laughs> is there a moment where you wouldn't recommend survival? I mean, is there really a moment where McCoy would go like, No, you know what? I think it's best if we just die. We're sick and we're getting sicker. But is it okay. worth it, though? But we have a good ship and the best crew in Starfleet. Do your jobs. Carry on. Worst pep talk ever. According to the life monitors, we're dying. We're all dying. So, theory time again. So this dark potato that I called, I suppose it's it's a place because it looks huge at a hundred thousand kilometers away. So this is like a, I imagine a three-dimensional place where you can put a ship and a whole system in it and it's just sucking out the life out of everyone because this kind of makes sense with what uh, Spock said when he felt that every uh, Vulcan on the ship died. He felt that nobody knew what was happening to them. And right now, they don't know what's happening to them. All we know is that whatever this is, ever since they crossed this threshold, it started to suck up the life out of the ship by a 5% from the reserves. And I suppose it also sucks up uh, life energy because all of these people is dying. So I know that, you know, the first instinct for everyone is just like... like McCoy said, let's get out of here. But this is just how many minutes? It's been only 15 minutes. So, of course, uh, that's not going to happen. And everyone will be at the brim of death before this episode solves itself. But I've been very wrong before. So. <laughs> Face palm. <laughs> Which seems to pervade the zone. Oh. oh! We went into reverse. Reverse? All I know is that... But why in reverse? Oh yeah, because they want to get out of there. Steadily decreasing. I've never experienced anything like it. Sucking every kind of energy out. We're being pulled toward the center of the zone of darkness. Oh. I suggest you order Mr. Scott to give us reverse power. Not anymore. He just gave us reverse power. We lurched forward. In that case, Captain, I would suggest we apply forward thrust. Is this like the opposite? Is is this kind of like what, you know, Alice in Wonderland? Well, this will be like the mirror story where everything you have to do has to be in the opposite. So when they set up the reverse mode, this thing started pulling and that's why they got this thrust that made them go forward. 
That's why they couldn't explain why is it going forward if you're going reverse. But now they know that as soon as they turn out the reverse, this thing started pulling away, pulling them inside. And so if what Spock suggests, like, let's move forward, will this thing make it go to the opposite side? This is like going into, you know, the mirror dimension. Life function indicators, they've started a sharp drop again. Stimulants. I don't know how long we can keep this up. This, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If this is the opposite and, and McCoy has been giving stimulants to everyone, he should be doping them. He should. He should be like be doping them down so they start getting energy back up. Everyone should get high. No, everyone should get stoned. Yeah, yeah, sorry. They shouldn't get high. They should get well, yeah, they should get really stoned. Basically, that's it. Okay. I think I got this. I think I got this. Well, if it doesn't work, I'll never let Spark live it down. Not you into forward. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't have any logic. It's doing it, sir. We're slowing down. We're not stopping. They seem to be stabilizing. We're at a dangerously low level. Well, we're still alive. I suppose. That's oh yeah, because they're not going as fast into that thing, so obviously they're keeping their energy. Okay, I got that. I have no idea why. He's also getting weak. Aww. Something within this zone absorbs all forms of energy, whether yeah. mechanically or biologically produced. The analysis of the zone indicates it is a negative energy field. Okay. Continue your research, Dismiss. This doesn't look optimistic at all. The intrepid would have done all these things too. Exactly. And yet they were destroyed. Vulcan has not been conquered within its collective memory. Oh. Was back so far that what was it you sensed? A touch of death. And what do you think they felt? Astonishment. Oh. Poor Scotty. He's he's going like crazy. Swimming against the current and all. Okay. Why would that guy be going upstairs? Oh my god. This guy should be already dead. Scotty. It's no good, sir. How long will the power hold out? Two hours, sir. Maintain thrust, Scotty. What the hell is that? This is definitely the source of the energy drain. Okay. Long length, approximately 11,000 miles. Whoa. Interior consists of protoplasm. Protoplasm? Very condition living. That's an organism? It's huge. It's a huge leech. I am so confused right now. Okay, that's the energy drain source. So that's the source of the energy drain. And it's huge, like 11,000 miles. And and it's, it's a living organism. <laughs> and the first thing that Kirk did. It's, oh, look at that. Let's probe it. <laughs> the first thing he did, he went and probed it. Obviously, that thing would be a little hostile to the Enterprise. And probably the Vulcans did it too, so I don't know. Looks like a volcano from a satellite view. Okay. Still feeling confused. A giant single-celled animal? Yes, for lack of a better term. It's a very simple form of life. In fact, it's a much simpler form of life. It's unicellular? How is it we survive? The intrepid must have come across the organism while it was still low in energy, still hungry. Yeah, safe. right now he's not that hungry. Unmanned probes can give us the information we need to destroy this thing. If... I must differ with you, Captain. Oh. We have sent unmanned probes into it. We could send one man, pinpoint its vulnerable spots. You know what the odds are in coming back? Yeah, yeah exactly. Commander Jim, you've got a volunteer. I've already done the preliminary work. It's a suicide mission. Moving it. To go slow when we penetrated its vulnerable spot. You have a martyr complex, Doctor. I submit that it disqualifies you. Ah, oh, stop it. Greatest living laboratory since the Vulcans saw it first. But Vulcans they didn't have a McCoy. Gentlemen, I am not taking volunteers. You don't think you're going. Which makes you indispensable, Captain. Further. So it's going to be Spock. We don't have one day, Doctor. We have precisely one hour and 35 minutes of power left. Jim, 
Captain, I would gentlemen, I'll decide. Yeah. He's done taking opinions. Mr. Spock is better suited physically and emotionally to stand stress. Yeah. Which of my friends do I condemn to death? Oh! Oh! I forgot the death part, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Spark, Dr. McCoy, I report to my quarters immediately. All levels are down 50% now and still draining. We can make Dr. McCoy will tell you what special equipment to put in it. Kirk out. I'm sorry, Mr. Spark. You're going with him? Not you, Bones. I'm sorry, Mr. Spark. You're best qualified to go. Ah, McCoy's very disappointed. You're determined not to let me share in this, aren't you? Stop it! It's not a competition, Doctor. Whether exactly. You Stop it, McCoy! My own kind of Wish me luck. What an idiotic time does he choose to start going all drama when they have only an hour and fifteen minutes? Why? Well. Brace yourselves. The area of penetration will no doubt be sensitive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is so dirty. Oh, and Dr. McCoy, you would not have survived it. Yeah, no. Back to be the nucleus. Oh. Changes indicate the organism has stored sufficient energy for a reproductive process to commence. Oh. Oh. They do those things. No. Contact loss. Oh man. What? 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 He's alive. That looks kind of trippy. So there will be two, four, eight more. Yeah, exactly. Entire anti-life matter that that thing puts out could someday encompass the entire galaxy. Exactly. So if they let. If they let this organism pull the ship in, but the ship is rigged in a matter that it could be like a deadly enema for those 40 chromosomes, like, you know, like a chlorine enema or something like that. I don't know. Can they become like a deadly pill for this organism? Because they cannot allow it to reproduce and they're not going to get it a contraceptive. So what are they going to use anyway? Yeah, so you if you are inside, you can hurt it from the inside. No, Dr. McCoy, you should have wished me luck. Ah, oh, the guilt! Ah! Oh. Drama! We can destroy the creature, provided we can do it from inside the organism. Become an enema. Clearly knew how to destroy it, but was unable to transmit that information. How do you feel? Am I so sentimental that I just have to keep believing that he's still alive out there in that mass of protoplasm? Of course he's alive! Will be the virus invading its body. Oh, isn't that... Okay, so they become the virus. If you diverted all remaining power to the shield, except for impulse power, keep that in reserve. Cut the engine thrust! Exactly. Okay. Kirk out. Oh, he's fainting too? No. <laughs> Okay, so it's really dragging everything back. That visual looks pretty cool. Oh man, that looks pretty cool. Oh, oh, look at that. I saved all I could, sir, but I don't know whether we have enough to get back out again or time either. We yeah, exactly. We have no power for the phasers. I think we'd probably like phasers. It eats power. Well, then what the devil? Exactly. Anti-power. No, exactly. Black probe could drift thousands of kilometers. We must be... Heroes! Exactly on target. Ah, sorry. But I bequeath my highest commendation and testimonial. The captain... Oh my goodness! There's so much drama! I wish to record my recommendations for the following personnel. They receive special citation. And my highest commendation for Commander Spock. <gasps> Science officer. Probe launched, sir.
right what Spock said. It's still plenty sensitive. Yeah, I thought it was insensitive from the inside. We'll be out in 6.37 minutes. Something Captain, is gonna fail. Metallic substance outside the ship. Spock. Done. Yeah. Gotta get a tractor beam. Captain, we don't have enough time to do it. We only have a 53 seconds. Or the energy. You abandoned the attempt. Shut up. Not risk the ship further on my behalf. Shut up, Spock. We're rescuing you. <laughs> yeah, that's where the meme comes from. McCoy. Captain McCoy. I love that. <laughs> okay. I love the lack of seat belt in the 60s. Activate main viewing screen. Oh, they're outside. Okay. The organism is destroyed, sir. Okay, and Spock? I don't know how, sir, but it's still with us. Oh, good. Request permission to come aboard. Spock, you're alive. Obviously, Captain. And I ask you botch the acetylcholine test. Later, later, later. <laughs> Okay. I'm still looking forward to a nice period of rest and relaxation on some lovely planet. Right. His favorite thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this was the immunity syndrome. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why syndrome and why immunity... I guess it'll just come as it comes, <laughs> as I read something, maybe. Um, it's a very interesting episode. Uh, in this case, it's again one of these times when the scriptwriter just, you know, he, he, he got a little boxing glove full of science and he just punched us right in the face with it and I loved it. You know, it doesn't hold the punches. It speaks about biology terms in this case and so... For an audience with a certain degree of education, you know, to understand this, to understand that it's a simple cell or what I would consider a unicellular type of organism. Uh, the fact that in this case, you, if it's absorbing energy, then probably any matter will do. So that's another thing to munch on scientifically speaking or you know at least to what our scientific knowledge uh reaches um but then there's uh, so much science going here with all of these terms like biology and uh the animator and um what else well parts of engineering that we also heard like there's so many things here and on the other hand we got so much drama and i mean we got so much drama from the three main characters we got this very dramatic scene between bones and spock before he got into the galileo uh we also got this very dramatic scene from kirk alone deciding which one of them two should go and choosing uh spock and then we have have this other very dramatic uh, scenes in uh, of Spock inside the Galileo and like oh you should have wished me luck and all that that like it's there's so much drama going on in this scene and also some of the technical aspects of it like uh, the lighting in some of scenes was a lot softer meaning that it was a little more emotional a scene. Uh, but there's so... this. I think this episode was in terms of colors. It was very balanced, unlike other episodes where there's a dominant color. In this case, I thought it was a little more balanced. Now, now that I think about it, the fact that we lost the... Uh, what was it? The Intrepid? Uh, what was the name of the Vulcan ship? The Intrepid, yeah. So... They just lost 400 Federation members. They just lost 400 lives. This should be huge. Because it's not only the fact that they lost a ship. 
it's 400 Vulcan lives, okay? So this should be a huge thing. As always, in this case, the episode starts with a mystery. We don't know what that big black spot is on the screen. We don't know why it's uh, things are happening, like losing the energy. And then, little by little, we start getting this little uh, information cookies, you know? Like, now you get this one that says that whatever it is, it's pulling... Uh, energy from the ship and also from the people and that we have to cross into it and then we find this other you know organism and it's a one single cell uh sorry it's a simple cell organism and so we get little snippets of information every now and then so that we can start getting a better picture of what's happening um i had my theories i know that for a lot of my theories i am completely way off i thought it was going to be first like in a mirror situation but then i th i was saying it and i was like they already got a mirror uh, episode but then i've thought about all the times that they repeat things very close in between episodes and like nobody cared back in the 60s so i thought maybe you know maybe nobody would care but the thing is that I was wrong just that and <laughs> So, yeah, I was way wrong on that one. At first, I thought it was going to be something, like, completely opposite, like a reverse entropy or something, that whatever they did, like, increasing power would only make them go backwards. So if you try to reduce the power, then you will move forward, and probably if you start giving a stimulants to the people to keep them up, maybe you should just use alcohol and keep them down to actually keep them up. I thought it was going to be some sort of that kind of thing, like reverse energy or negative energy. I thought it was going to be something like this. In this case, again, the one that I missed a lot was Sulu. He was the one that was not here included. I, I reckon that this is because he was uh, still with John Wayne and the Green Barrettes, so that's why we miss him in a lot of episodes in the second season. This episode touches... It's... I understand why a lot of people... Not not a lot of people. I think only five votes were for this episode. But I understand why uh, more people liked it. Because it covers a lot of areas. Like I said, it covers all, you know, science and engineering uh, things. Like uh, about this organism and all the characteristics that we already mentioned about this uh, organism. And we also got the terms about, you know, like... Um, negative energy and uh, all about the probes and I think they said it was like protoplasm what it's made of this black area and um, you know we have to start mixing like the symptoms of the people and what's happening on the outside like I said it's a lot of science there going on but then we got the drama area where it's mostly about friendship and professionalism I would say um, we see a lot of parts where we we just see this great friendship between Bones, Spock, and uh, Kirk and how special it is and how much they can still feel jealous like Bones did uh, and Spock is still going to be stoic and, you know, just doing things knowing that he's probably not going to come back. Um... I think McCoy's attitude about that is completely irrational, completely out of place. We only have a few minutes and he wants to spend it doing this kind of drama. That was kind of infuriating for me. And another thing that was also very dramatic, but it's also kind of heartwarming. To, well, to me, it was a little bit corny, but I understand why some people might like it. Is when they started commending each other, like Spock commending the ship. Okay, yeah, but like... It's too much. That was a way a little bit too much. And then Kirk commending him back, like especially him, like this interchange of commendations. Yeah, lovely. Unnecessary, but still. As always, there's something to learn about uh, Spock and his Vulcan nature. In this case was this um, telepathy. Like uh, at the beginning, uh, McCoy questioned him, like, didn't don't you have to be in direct contact? But now that I remember, 
in A Taste of Armageddon, he was able to control, to mind control a guard from behind a wall so he can use telepathy. But for some other things, he does have to touch, like he touched the Horda in Devil in the Dark and the same way that he touched uh, Nomad from the Changeling. So, uh, Jesus, sometimes I have to remember the characters and, and the episodes in my Poor hamster in my mind is going like, like you know, poor Roadrunner. Anyway, um, but the thing is, it uh, we've seen it both ways, like direct contact and from the outside. He can have this kind of telepathy. He's abs obviously we already know how sensitive he is in this kind of matters, and. Um, you know the need of someone like Spock in an ep in in a show like this is like you know undeniable because he has this telepathy or you know sensitivity but he also has all this knowledge and he has all of the logic and all of that so obviously um how important a character he is in order for the episodes to develop to have the uh, necessary information Yes, some episodes are bad. Last episode, uh, well, not last episode, but uh, the game source of Triskelion, he's barely uh, involved in the episode and he's just like guessing. And when he does that, the episode, pre uh, it's pretty crappy. So in this case, his involvement is great and, and, and the way that the script made Spock useful is a very entertaining, very interesting way. For me, it was really, you know, engaging. Props to Lieutenant Kyle. Uh, I think he was also very useful, even though he wasn't that much in the episode. It, you kind of leave the episode with memories of him. So yeah, props to, to, to this guy. Um... John Winston. Okay, so now let's react to a couple of facts from the IMDb page. The Space Amoeba optical effects were created by Frank van der Veer of van der Veer Photo Effects. The amoeba itself is a mixture of liquids pressed between two thin sheets of glass. As the sheets were moved, the liquid flow as if the amoeba were pulsating. The same techniques were, was used to present psychedelic light shows in the late 1960s when vans were playing at venues such as the Fillmore West and Avalon Ballroom in San Francisco. And I think this kind of thing also was used in The Fountain, this Aronofsky movie, where they have like really cool optical effects and these are all actually liquids interacting and, you know, recorded in a different lens. And that's what makes it look so magical. So yeah, I think I, I love this. This is the last time the interior of a shuttlecraft is shown in the series. What? I thought it was going to be for the season. This is the last episode directed by Joseph Pevney, who, along with Mark Daniels, holds the record for directing the most number of episodes for the series, which is 14. And yeah, I actually, I noticed his name. This was the last time in which Kirk's green wraparound tonic was used. The last time viewers would see the shirt would be in Bread and Circuses, which had been filmed earlier, but not aired for almost a year. Okay. This was what is known as a bottle episode episode, which is often done to save money. Star Trek was often at odds over its budget and often exceeded it due to special effects and set constructions. The network insisted they produce a cheap episode to save money. This one had no expensive guest stars, which saves a lot of money, no outdoor location filming, and no new set construction, and therefore came significantly under budget. Okay, yeah, actually I didn't notice that because it's so common that you get to see everything. You get to notice things that are out of place. So The remastered version of this episode features never-seen-before effects, shots of the Enterprise in total darkness, illuminated only by its windows and running lights. I didn't notice that. This is the first episode ending with a Paramount Television logo instead of the Desilu logo after Desilu was sold to Paramount Pictures. Oh... Okay. Although the name was cut from the final draft, the captain of the USS Intrepid was named Satak. 
Okay, that's a horrible name. John Winston Kyle wears a gold uniform for the only time in the series. This was done so that he would match the stock footage from the captain's chair's viewpoint showing Chekhov and Hadley's right shoulder. Okay, this was apparently arranged partway through filming because in the teaser, Kyle can be briefly seen as at the helm wearing his typical red uniform. Okay. The end credits include a makeup test shot of Bill Blackburn as the android from Return from Tomorrow wearing a brown velour zipper top. The good thing is that would have uh, spoiled me. The equipment inside the shuttlecraft included computer banks that were previously seen in the, the Starbase operation room in the Menagerie Part 1 and the Aminium War Room in A Taste of Armageddon. Okay. Kirk's deep... Oh, yeah, one of the huge... I was looking at this huge computer that was just like this big dresser and I thought like that looks more like a dresser. Kirk's deep compassion for his crew is shown somewhat more prominently than usual at around 10.10. Due to exhaustion, Lieutenant Uhuru is sitting with her head leaning on her hand in an uncharacteristically distracted manner. Shit, this is so difficult to pronounce. Due to exhaustion, Lieutenant Uhura is sitting with her hand leaning on her hand in an uncurrent... <laughs> due to exhaustion... <laughs> due to exhaustion, Lieutenant Uhura is sitting with her head leaning on her hand in an uncharacteristically distracted manner. As Kirk approaches her to give her instructions to send the signal to Starfleet, he squeezes her shoulders and pats the right one affectionately. Aww... In the remastered version of the Doomsday Machine, two shuttlecraft are seen in Enterprise's hangar. In this one, the Galileo is the only one seen. This is because Commodore Matthew Decker used the Columbus in a suicidal attempt to destroy the planet Killer. Yes, the Enterprise had not put in for resupply since that incident, so the Columbus had not yet been replaced. Oh, well, we got a great excuse for missing that. The scene where Spock telepathically feels the loss of the Intrepid's crews is famously mirrored in the original Star Wars. As Obi-Wan Kenobi, he suffers much the same reaction when a planet is destroyed by Imperial forces. That is true. The young crew woman who Kirk admires as he records his log at the end of the show appears to be the same extra who portrayed the second female Klingon in A Day of the Dove. Okay. Only episode in the series that doesn't have a guest star other than semi-regulars John Winston and Eddie Paskey. Okay. The usual banter between Spock and McCoy takes on an uncharacteristically dark tone as Spock is preparing to board the shuttlecraft. His exhausted condition obviously affecting his behavior, McCoy accuses Spock of ambition and spite. You're determined not to let me share in this, aren't you? Had he been thinking more clearly, he would have realized Vulcans do not act on ambition or spite. More accurately, they profess not to do so. Okay. Good point. Spock, exp exp uh, <laughs> Spock explains that Vulcan was never conquered and that Vulcan collective consciousness cannot conceive of the feeling of being conquered. However, in the consciousness of the king, McCoy says, now I know why they were conquered in response to Spock's refusal to drink alcohol. This might be explained by Vulcan never having been conquered, but one or more of their colonies have been annexed by another power at some point. Or more likely that McCoy just doesn't know Vulcan history very well. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the second one. The CGI shots in the remastered version appear in 16 to 9 widescreen instead of the standard 4 at 3 full screen aspect ratio. Best quotes. And the first quote is, brace yourselves, the area of penetration will no doubt be sensitive. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I really enjoyed this episode. I understand why people voted for it. Like I said, it covers a lot of things in my opinion, but it did it in a way that it didn't get me lost or anything. Um, a little bit slow in some parts, like I mentioned, but not really that much. Uh, now, one thing that I'm really concerned about is that from the 15 episode lists that you guys voted, I only have two more episodes to review 
and then I'm done. But still, I got 12 more episodes to do, so most of them are just going to be review episodes. It's a shame because there won't be that many reaction videos now left on YouTube. They're going to be review videos, and I'm going to try to do my best giving you the best and, you know, entertaining videos for my reviews of that. But, you know, everything else, it's, you know, this is a democracy. You guys voted. I, I gave you what you guys voted for. So the, the, the rest of it is apparently pretty bad uh, because nobody voted for those episodes. And that means I'm just going to be doing the reviews and expecting every single episode I do from now on. It's just going to be pretty bad. Uh, but I'll do my best trying to write those episodes, trying to do them quick, uh, which is probably what, uh, you know, it's my biggest problem is writing those episodes anyway. But, you know, remember to start thinking about your 15 favorite episodes from the third season so you can start voting at the end of this season. And, you know, just leave it on the comments uh, so that I can count all the votes to what episodes you want to have reactions here in YouTube. Remember, most voted episodes will get reactions here on YouTube and the rest will go to my Patreon or YouTube memberships. Anyway, thank you for joining me in this episode. I'll see you in the next one. God bless and bye-bye.